So ever since I left the United States about six months ago to travel full time, I constantly keep getting asked, Tom, why have you done it? So be sure to smash the like button because in this video, I'm gonna give you five reasons why I left the United States to travel full time and work online by myself. So that's pretty much it. And this video is a little bit different than what I usually do. I usually talk about how to make money with drop shipping or anything like that. But now I'm gonna show you kind of what the fruits of my labor you know, I've been doing this for almost four full years now, pretty much four full years. What, you know, it's allotted me to be able to do, you know, what you can in the future possibly do as well if you put the time and effort and work for yourself. And, and I could have done this much earlier. I, I, you know, I was three plus years into it before I left, but I never really felt the need to until in the last year where you realize that things can change at, you know, in any moment and, you know, you, why not make the most of it? And that's what I'm gonna talk about this video. I'm not going to go inside of my computer, but I will, you know, cut to different videos and clips of where I've been and things like that. But right now I don't have the ability to carry my camera around, so I can't do this while talking. So let's get started. So first off, not even part of the num of the five is I work online so I can make money from wherever I want. If this does not work, if you have a physical business or if you have a job where you have to go in all the time in the United States. So that's the first thing, you know, I have the ability to do so. So I did it. So what are the five main reasons why I did it? And are there any drawbacks to it? So first off, number one is going to be the weather. And I have my notes right here. The weather, depending on where you go. So to explain a little bit more, I lived three and a half months in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. And I've spent the last two plus months or two months pretty much since I'm recording this, pretty much traveling around Costa Rica in about three different places. And in about a week, I'm going to be moving to San Juan del Sur, Nicaragua, which I've already been to before. And I, know, I already know I like it. I have a pretty nice place there. So number one is going to be the weather. You know, I've been traveling to warm places south of the border. I can pick and choose my weather. When I left, it was in January in Boston. 2020 one actually so it was very cold you know i'm locked inside and you know, there's restrictions there's there's all sorts of things restaurant restrictions can't walk on the street restrictions all sorts of stuff and it's snowing like a foot all the time and in boston it's cold i i'm paying a ton of money to live in this basically jail cell and i i wanted better weather honestly so better weather you can pick and choose wherever you want to go. Mexico is always going to be pretty warm, pretty much depending on where you are for the most part. Costa Rica, I don't think that there's a really a cold spot minus in, unless you're high up in the mountains and you can pick and choose where you want to go. Say it's too warm where you are, you can go somewhere colder. But me personally, I like the warm tropical weather. I've been to a lot of Spanish speaking countries and places and that's what I really like. So number one is definitely the weather. Number two, is going to be the price of things. You know, everything is much cheaper depending on where you go. Obviously, you know, if I went from the US to the UK, I'd be complaining about how it's more expensive. Or if I went from the US to even Canada, it would be more expensive. Or most places or some majority of places in Europe will probably be mo more expensive than, you know, the United States or close to. I was spending almost $3,000 a month on rent in Boston like I said, to live in a 600 square foot jail cell that I couldn't really leave. Granted, it's a nice building, don't get me wrong. I'm paying a, I'm paying a lot of money for it, or I was. But it, I, no amount of niceness in this building it can justify that price to me. $3,000 a month for a 600 square foot unit is, is terrible. But I rented it quickly and I needed a place to live. So price, I lived in Playa del Carmen with an apartment that's bigger than what I lived in in Boston with two bathrooms instead of one. Beautiful rooftop pool, open year round, not just seasonally like in Boston. And I was paying $1,200 a month, month to month. And I could imagine if I paid in cash for like six months at a time, if I wanted to, I could probably get it for under $1,000. I know other people that were paying much less than that. Mine was pretty fancy and mine was right on the most popular road, Quinta Avenida in Playa del Carmen. So you got the convenience factor it's a little bit more expensive. So everything's cheaper. I was getting 12 tacos. I remember me and a buddy got six tacos each and a bottle of water each and we paid at $12 altogether. So 12 tacos and two bottles of water for $12. Uh, Costa Rica is a little bit more expensive with the food. The rent's definitely cheaper. I know people paying uh, where I'm living right now for a six month stay. They're paying literally $600 a month, $700 a month um, because they've committed to a longer period of time. And it's really much cheaper for rent. Food's more expensive if you want US-based things. Like I was pretty much blown, I was pretty blown away when I got a thing of 
peanut butter from the auto mercado up the street and that was seven dollars in costa rica because they don't eat peanut butter here so it's all imported just peanut butter seven dollars for like a 16 ounce bottle it's pretty wild but if you live the way or if you live a moderate life or the way that the locals do because if you know the locals don't eat the peanut butter so why would they have a lot of it why would it be in abundance it's supply and demand but if you live you know a normal life you could go out and probably eat half of your meals out in mexico and party pretty hard and you still wouldn't get close to even paying the price that i was paying in rent per month for everything um costa rica has proven to be a little bit more expensive that is why i'm heading to nicaragua but still it's much cheaper than living in the united states you know you go on you get drunk and you go uber eat something in the united states you spend like 50 60 dollars so that's number two is price uh and hopefully you enjoy this video i know it's different I'm rambling a bit probably. Number three is experiencing different cultures in different places. You know, Costa Rica is absolutely beautiful. Every town has like its own little beautiful sight to see or an amazing beach or anything like that. There's cenotes in Mexico. There's tons of stuff, Mayan ruins. There's everything around different places like this. And why not? You know, life's short. It's not meant to be lived behind a desk nine to five, sitting there 40 hours a week. It just doesn't make sense. So why not go experience other places, cultures, foods, learn their language? I'm, you know, I've taken six years of Spanish in high school and I kind of wanted to start learning again. So I started taking Spanish lessons. It's so cheap in Nicaragua. I'm doing it online. And then when I get to Nicaragua, I'll start um, doing it in person. And why not? Like, again, I walked to on, in Mexico. I walked two streets. I was on the beach. And I would walk on the beach every day for lunch break. Same thing here. I'm probably like three streets away, but I have a bicycle. I can get there real quick. And it's amazing. It's beautiful. And the people are much nicer. A lot of people in uh, the New England area are definitely a little crotchety. Uh, and I do, I do kind of, I've come to like that or become accustomed to it. But when everybody is just so nice here um, and, you know, I was talking with one uh, girl in Mexico and she said, I said, everybody's so nice. And she's like, yeah, it's because they want their money. But I was like, your money? And I was like, well, in the United States, people want your money too, and they're still not nice. So I don't, it, it's still, it's still a breath of fresh air. Number four is going to be, and be sure to stay all the way to the end because number five is definitely probably one of the most important. Um, number four is meeting like-minded people. And especially in Playa del Carmen, Mexico, it's a digital nomad hotspot. You could go to the gym there, or I would go to the gym there, and you would hear like five conversations going at a time about, you know, my American Express cards or my Shopify store or, you know, I'm running this email marketing agency, like every single different, every single conversation was like something about business. Everybody's like minded in, you know, running a business, starting a business, growing their business, anything like that. For the most part, obviously there's outliers and stuff, but if you pick a big digital nomad hotspot, there will be tons of like minded people, which I think helps you get more work done, helps you see other sides of what other people are doing, you know, really kind of appreciate it. Yes, there's some people that are like, oh, I run these businesses in reality, they're just there blowing their money or spending their parents' money. But there's a lot of cool individuals there that if you're staying, I mean, Boston probably has a lot of them too. Let's say you're staying in your hometown, like where I grew up 30 minutes outside of Boston, you're not gonna find people that are, it's not a digital nomad hotspot. You might have one other person in your town. Actually, that I found out grew up in my town the other day that runs like a pretty big Instagram account. Um, but it's really not that popular. You'd have to go travel for it, but you could walk down the street in Mexico in Playa del Carmen and find tons of them. Puerto Viejo in uh, Costa Rica is the same thing. I've yet to go there, but I'm gonna try to head there. Also, San Juan del Sur in Nicaragua has a bit of it. Uh, but not much. You, you can go, you can look them up online, Medellin, Colombia. There's a ton of them where tons of people go. And for me personally, I just like, you know, the central South America. I like staying in a relatively close time zone. That's why I'm not in Asia or in like Bali or Thailand, although Bali does look cool. And last but not least to end my rambling here is definitely tax deductions. I mean, once you start making a good amount of money, or even when you're making not a great amount of money, you're going to realize that 30 ish percent maybe more maybe less of your money is going to the taxes pretty much without a doubt that's that's a guarantee once you start making a lot of money it starts hurting you know it starts hurting morally it starts hurting deep down inside um and why is the government owed 30 percent of my taxes for nothing you know you worked hard for your money you should be able to keep the large majority of it not 70% of it or 65% of it. Other countries are worse, I know. You know, there's definitely incentives and why not? You know, if, if there's an incentive there, I'm there to take it. And that's, that's why it's called an incentive. You just need to do it properly. 
So, or a tax deduction, you know, there is, there's deductions that you can take. So one that I'm looking into, or I've been looking into is the foreign earned income exclusion, which basically means that if you have a base somewhere else outside of the United States, and there's different rules for it, then if you can prove that, then you don't get charged tax on your first, like I think this year it's like a hundred and eight thousand dollars that you make so say you only make and it was made for people i think that were like in the army like say you're in the army and you're living in germany you're not working for in the united states you're not doing anything in the united states you're just in like a different country um and at that point in time why would you have to pay taxes so it's it's kind of like that so the foreign earned income exclusion comes in uh, multiple different ways but one of them is the bona fide resident act um or bona fide resident test which is basically if you live outside of the u.s for 330 days out of 365 days of a year or a consecutive 12 month period, then you, you pretty much get it. So that's why I haven't gone back to the States in six months. Um, if you think about it, say I'm getting taxed at like 25, 30% on $108,000, I'm probably saving 25, $30,000. That's pretty much what it is. If I'm making more than that, yes, I'm still gonna be paying taxes on anything above that but it's a way to save money. Is it the best way to save money? No, but is it, in my opinion, was it the quickest and easiest way without planning things out? Yes, I just left. I, I left on the 18th of January and I haven't gone back yet. So, I, and this isn't a tax lesson. This is not tax advice. You need to look into this yourself and contact people, the right people, but also if you're living in other countries, you need to look into if you are, you know, breaking their tax threshold there or anything like that. That's why I left Mexico after six, uh, before six months because they do have rules on that. Costa Rica really doesn't, uh, it's, it's territorial tax country. There's a lot of rules and I don't wanna get into it. This isn't a tax video, but tax incentives, deductions, you know, just a bonus for being outside of the country for, you know, and not doing anything in the US for an entire year, basically. So those are the five reasons why I left, but none of this could have been possible if I wasn't making money online with drop shipping, with affiliate marketing, with other, just, you know, I've started some, in interesting Instagram pages that I plan to um, build up or I've built one up pretty well so far and other ones I plan to sell advertising space on and other things like that. It's just always, you know, where you're at, just make yourself better every single day. And that's what I've been doing for the last four-ish years. So, you know, hopefully this video was insightful. Hopefully I have some clips, you know, as I'm recording this in one go, hopefully I have some clips that I can add in of places that I've been and things that I've done have to get those over to my editor. Um, and if you like this type of video or anything else, let me know down below, because I can make videos of how cheap it is to live in Nicaragua. I saw a video that I wanted to do the other day of a couple traveling around where I'm gonna be traveling around in Nicaragua, like what they could get for $1 on the street. And there was some pretty interesting food or what, um, how much they could get at a market for $10. They got, if you're at a Whole Foods getting food like that, it would probably be like $40 what they got. Um, but they got it for, le I think it was $10 or a little bit less. Um, so any videos like that, obviously tie it back into e-commerce or anything like that. I really do think that it's a new wave, a new generation, a new movement of being able to work from wherever you want. As long as your internet is good and stable and you have a connection, then why not? Why not do it? Most places aren't seeing the massive inflation that is happening in the United States and they were cheaper to begin with. So you're not only saving money on a tax deduction, you're also saving money on a cost of living deduction, which is a double savings, which then can compound later on if you invested or if you reinvested into your business and you can grow that much quicker and that much better or have that, mu that much more of a nest egg later on to survive off of. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Smash the like button if you liked it. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you and I will see you in the next one.